So in this video, we are going to take a look at some ways that you can empower student creativity with AI specifically in Canva. So last November, we all became aware of some of the power of artificial intelligence, specifically with OpenAI's release of ChatGPT. Now, if you haven't used ChatGPT before, on the screen, it gives you an idea of some of the things that it can do. So the prompt that I asked to do was to write a presentation about the AI features in Canva, and it was able to generate the steps to complete the presentation, including the slides as well as the text that could go on each of the slides. And this is just a small sampling of some of the things that you can do with ChatGPT. So naturally, AI and ChatGPT became a topical conversation in including in schools and education institutions. But for the most part, there were two different responses to ChatGPT. The first that you see on the left was to publicly ban it. Yes, ChatGPT does have a lot of benefits, but there are some negatives that could get in the way of learning, such as plagiarism, students being able to generate an entire assignment and not actually doing the work themselves the threat of using ChatGPT to generate malicious code. So for the most part, a lot of school districts decided to ban ChatGPT. But if you look on the right side, here's the other take that ChatGPT should not be banned. And that's because artificial intelligence is here and it's not going to go anywhere. In fact, in the next year, you'll see more AI tools like what we're going to look at in this video. So the thinking is that teachers and students should be able to start learning how to use AI responsibly. And that's what I want to share with you today, because all of the tools that are in Canva will allow you or your students to use AI in a responsible way and to really see how the potential outweighs some of the risks. Now, if you've never heard of Canva before, it is a graphic design program. It's been around for a while, but recently Canva released Canva for Education. And as you can see on your screen, it's a free platform for K through 12 school districts by signing up for Canva for Education. It's not only 100% free, but it provides all teachers, staff, and really anyone in your school directory with a free Canva Pro account. So let's get started with the first tool, and that is called Magic Write. Now, this is a feature that's only available for teachers or staff on a Canva education account. It's not available to students yet, but let's see how it works. So Magic Write is available on all of the Canva designs, but I think it works best on a Canva doc. This is kind of like a Google doc that you can create in Canva, but a document that you can just make more visual. So this is my Canva doc. The first thing that I want to do is to show you Magic Write. To do this, I'm going to hit the plus button and I'm going to select Magic Write. So this is basically this this is basically a version of Chat GPT. It's not exactly the same, but there is a version of GPT 3.5 that Canva has embedded into its platform. And you use Magic Write the same way you would use Chat GPT. So it says use five or more words to describe what you want to write. So in this case, I'm going to ask Magic Write to give me some of the benefits of using AI. And in just a few moments, I should be given a prompt. There it is, right over here on the screen. Okay, now this is good, but let's say that maybe I want more text. I wanna expand this text. I can do that with Magic Write by simply copying the text, hitting the plus button, and choosing this option that says expand. Okay, so now I have a expanded version of text. Now I mentioned earlier how some of the AI tools in Canva are safe. 
Canva has put some precautions in. So what it's able to generate, there is a character limit. So you're not going to be able to get have magic right, generate a five page essay. There's just too many characters. There's a limit. So if students do at some point have access to magic right, they won't be able to use it to write multi-page essays. It's really just kind of like a, a brainstorming tool or a tool that will get students to be thinking about a topic. Same thing if this was the essay and I was talking about some of the benefits of AI. Of AI. It gives me some good information, but it's probably not going to be complete enough for me to turn in for an assignment. So again, just an example of precautions. Also, if you're doing anything malicious, like I talked about writing malicious code, it will not do that. So this is a safe tool for students to be able to kind of experiment using AI if at some point they are able to use it. Okay, so let me go down. Let me try magic right again. This time I'm going to ask it to give me five ways to use AI with Canva. Okay, and there we go. There are five different suggestions. Just a really helpful tool when you are starting to begin a document. If you don't want to start with a completely blank page, you can use Magic Write, and it will kind of give you a little bit of help to begin writing your document. Okay, now let me show you one other thing. So this is an article from Newzella. It's just about the topic of the multiverse. So let's say that I have this reading and I'm just looking for a quick way to summarize everything. It's not super important to my job. I don't have to go through and read it close, but I just kind of want to get a summary of what a block of text is. So what I'm going to do is I will take all of the text. And again, this can be from any website. It doesn't have to be Newzella. It can be from any site. I'm going to go back to my document. This time I'm going to go to the bottom and I'm just going to paste my text. Okay, that's all the text that I copied and pasted from that article. Now I'm just going to highlight that text. And this time, if I go up to the top, I'm going to select the plus button or that magic button and I'm going to choose this option, summarize text. And there we go. It was able to summarize that long multi-paragraph article into a concise block of text. And again, if this is something important, you probably wouldn't want to only rely on that summary tool, but it is there if you're looking for a quick way to summarize text. Now, the other thing that you may have noticed is that if I highlight the text, on the page, and if I click that magic button, I do have the option to even rewrite this text. So not only did Canva summarize that text, but I can use the rewrite feature to now rewrite this text in a different way. So if you're in a district that has ChatGPT blocked and you have access to Canva, I would definitely start to experiment with Magic Write. So again, Magic Write is available in Canva for all faculty and staff. It is not on student accounts as of now, but it's definitely one to check out. Now let's check out another AI tool and that is Canva's text to image. If you're familiar with OpenAI's Dolly, this is very similar. We're going to use text prompts, but we're actually going to generate images instead of text. Let me show you how. Let's go ahead and open the text to image tool. If you select apps on the left side of your screen, it's right over here. You can see the description, type what you'd like to see and watch it come to life. This app is incredibly easy and you'll see sometimes the results are very powerful. So let's say that I want to create an image of a grizzly bear walking through Times Square in Manhattan. I'm going to enter my prompt that says a grizzly bear walking through Times Square on a busy summer day in downtown Manhattan. To generate an image of this text prompt, I can scroll to the bottom and select create image. In just a few minutes, Canva will give me four different images based on this text prompt. 
and here they are. You can see the four individual photos. Let me go ahead and, uh, and bring them on this page just so you can see them a little bit better. All right, so we've got our four different images of that grizzly bear in New York City. If I were to just do a Google search, I'd probably be hard pressed to find something this specific. Canva does have a really vast library of photos that's available in the Elements Library, but I don't think that I could find a bear in New York City in Elements. So if you have a really specific idea in mind for a photo that you would like to see, you can use AI to be able to create that image inside Canva. Now, I'm going to go back to that text to image prompt because there are some other things that you can do as well. So this style, I believe, is kind of just like a photo realistic style. I didn't set it here, it just kind of generated whatever one came up. But if you have something really specific that you want to see, you can select one of the styles, everything from photography to digital art to fine art. So this time I'm going to generate that prompt again in the style of Dreamy. Let me go ahead and create this again. Okay, let's take a look at some of these ones. This is a really cool style. I don't know if I would use this one because this is more of an artistic style versus just a, a photo realism kind of image, but I do like uh, some of the colors and the designs of this photo. So maybe for the purposes that uh, I generated this photo for, I could use one of these dreamy images. I kind of really like that one right over here. But this was just to show you how you can set a specific style to your photo um, if you're looking for something specific for however you need to use this content. Now we talk about safety again. This is a version of Stable Diffusion, which is a text to image model. Canva within integrating this into their platform set it. So you're not going to be able to generate images that infringe on someone's trademark or that create images of specific people or anything that's been tagged as inappropriate. So this is available for students. They can use it but those safety parameters are there. So it's a great way to really begin to experiment and to discuss how AI can be used. So now let's take it a step further. How specifically could you use text to image for student assignments? I think that there is a great connection to individual writing. So our students write all of these really creative, original ideas. But when it comes to illustrate some of those ideas, it may be challenging to find photos that do it justice. So this is a story about a young girl who wakes up in Washington, DC, and sees ivy covered all around the Washington Monument. That's going to be a hard photo to find on the internet. It's going to be a challenging photo for this student to be able to recreate with a drawing if they don't have that artistic ability. And if I search the Canva Elements Library, it's probably not going to be there. So what I like about text to image is I can use text to image to find an appropriate illustration for their writing. So here you can see my prompt was the Washington Monument covered in ivy text to image was able to find it was able to create a great photo of our monument covered in lots of different layers of ivy. You can see the one that I selected and some of the other suggestions to the left. Now further in that story this young girl takes out a pair of scissors and actually tries to cut the ivy off herself. This shows you some of the limitations that the technology currently has. Now, if you look to the left, there are the four images that were generated. I do kind of like that one on the top right. I think that might work for this story, but you can see the one next to it. For some reason, the girl's face is just in the right-hand corner. I'm not really sure why. And she doesn't have scissors. She has like a long 
some kind of long blade. If you look to all the way to the right where my photo has been enlarged, there's that young girl, but there's some sort of really strange blur over her face. She's not using a pair of scissors. It looks like she has some kind of blade in for some reason. There is a green scarf or green material wrapped around her arm. So sometimes you do get some very interesting results, but fortunately you can generate this multiple times until you find something that you want. So that is Canva's text to image. I think it's a great way for you and for students to begin using AI and begin to discuss some of the features associated with it. So next, we are going to check out some of the AI photo editing tools that are available in Canva. In the past, you used to have to know a program like Photoshop to be able to pull off some of these edits. Now you can do it really easily in Canva. So let's go ahead and begin. So I started creating this presentation over here and I would like to feature this teacher in my presentation. So I guess I could crop the photo like this and, and maybe move it in the corner. I guess I could enlarge it so then it, it sort of looks like this. I could crop it a little bit more, but it seems like for this layout that box is really getting in the way, the box around the photo. Now, I could bring this into a different program, of course, one like Photoshop and try to use the cutting tool to cut around her, but I have a better idea because I'm going to use some of the AI tools in Canva. To access the AI tools, you just select the photo that you want to edit. We're gonna go up to where it says edit photo and you will see the option, the magic icon is right over here. Here are the magic tools. So what I'm going to do is choose this option that says background remover. And look at that, that box around that teacher that we previously saw right over here has now been completely removed. This is a great, really easy and quick feature that you can use to really help make your designs look professional. And now that this is here, I can do stuff like maybe put future technology this way. I can kind of redesign this opening slide so that our teacher or our educator is the star of this. I'm no longer confined to the box around the photo, which also can get in the way and make things a little more visually confusing for my audience. So this is a great tool that will allow you to move the background of any photo with just one simple click. I use this one all of the time. So let me show you another photo and that's this photo that I uploaded. I found this one on the internet. This nice family went to the beach, tried to take a beautiful family photo and unfortunately there was a photo bomber who came in and ruined it. So I don't want to remove the background here but what I do want to remove is just this unwanted part of the photo. And fortunately you can do that in Canva. This time I'm going to select edit photo and I'm going to choose the option that says magic eraser. Okay. With my magic eraser, I'm going to select the brush size and I am going to just brush out around this individual. Kind of like that. Just want to highlight anything that I don't want. It doesn't have to be perfect. So you can see that I've sort of overlapped it a little bit. I overlapped this man a little bit, but that's fine. After I'm done, I am going to release my mouse and take a look at that. The AI was able to remove that, that photo bomber from the photo, but also was able to preserve the background of this photo. So take a look at this. This was the original photo. This is the edited photo that magic erase feature did an awesome job. So again, a simple feature that's going to be extremely helpful, save you a lot of time and help your photos look the way that you want them to. So now let me show you another photo of a photo bomber. I believe this is actor Chris Hemsworth. I wanna get him out of this nice couple's photo on the pool from their vacation. So I'm going to follow those same steps. I'm gonna use Magic Eraser. Let me go ahead and erase. Kind of like that. 
and look at that. He's automatically removed. And let me just get his feet down here just so that doesn't kind of give away the fact that he's not in the photo anymore or that I touched up that photo. <laughs> there we go. And you know what? Why don't I just get rid of some of these, I don't know if they're beer cans or beer bottles or whatever else, but if I just sort of touch them, they will be removed. And there we go. We have a nice photo that no longer has our photo bomber there. But the creepy thing is, while our photo bomber is gone, look at that. His reflection is still inside the pool. Let me go ahead and use Magic Eraser one more time. Let's see if I'm able to, uh, to remove him from the reflection. Let's see how this looks. I'll just try that again. Okay, look at that. Not only did I remove the photo bomber, I also removed the reflection. So now what I'm going to do is to take this photo. This is a casual photo of a young man that was taken. And let's say that this young man wants to use this photo as his headshot for his LinkedIn page or for his resume. Now, if he's applying at a very formal setting, he's a little bit underdressed for the types of jobs that he is going to be applying for. So what I'm going to do is use another AI tool that is going to let me replace some of the elements of this photo. I'm going to go to edit photo and I'm going to choose this option that says magic edit. What magic edit will allow me to do is to not only select a part of this photo but to select and actually edit that. So I'm going to make my brush size a little bit bigger so I can just erase the majority of the parts of this photo that I don't want. Actually, I'm going to reset that. So when you have a big area like this, I generally use this bigger brush to get the majority of it. And then I will switch to a smaller size to get some of the parts around, kind of like that. Now, the good news is, is that it doesn't have to be perfect when you are doing this. You just kind of have to get close, even if you sort of overwrite over the person or the part of the photo that you want. The AI is usually pretty intelligent, so it knows not to remove that part in most cases. But, you know, if we do this and it doesn't look the way that we want, we can always reset it and try it again. So now what I'm going to do is just take this brush size, make it a little bit smaller because I have this little space in between his arms. And then I also have a small space right over here around his arm and leg. Okay, next I'm going to select continue. And this time it's going to ask me to type what I want to generate in that purple brushed area. And I'm going to choose this, a professional office setting, high quality blurred background. Let me select generate and we'll see what Canva is able to come up with. Okay, so I have four different suggestions. I'm just going to select on a couple. This one looks kind of interesting, but maybe just a little too busy visually. This one is not bad. It looks like he's just in an office on a floor. And then you have this one. It looks like your typical uh, new age office with computer terminals and that sort of thing. So I think I like this one. So this is good. The setting is good, but now this, this uh, applicant is a little bit underdressed. So what I'm going to do now is try Magic Edit again. This time, I'm just going to brush over his clothing. Okay, this, this blue dress shirt. He does have dress pants on, but uh, I think I'll brush over those as well. There we go. Just want to fill in everything just kind of like that. Okay, next I'm going to select what I want to generate. 
Okay, so here's what I have. A professional black formal men's dress suit. And I'm even going to say from, and we will say from Burberry. All right, let's generate this and let's see what Canva is able to outfit our job applicant with. Okay, look at that. Not bad. I don't know about the bow tie. Let me maybe pick this one. Not horrible. How about this one? This one looks a little strange because this part of the suit is different than the sleeves. You've got this one maybe a little too loud. You know, I think maybe this one is the winner. Now, if you look closely, of course, you can see that uh, that maybe you could tell that this has been edited. But if we do something like maybe crop this a little bit, just sort of like that. There we go. We have a brand new formal headshot that we were able to generate from this photo by simply using some of the AI tools that are available in Canva for photo editing. So we saw a little bit about how to remove a background from a photo. Now let's see how to remove a background from a video using some of the features of Canva. So not everyone knows this, but you can actually create a video in Canva. This is a design that has been upgraded quite a bit over the last few months, and, and I'm guessing that we'll see more upgrades to come. Now there are all different types of animated background in Canva's elements library, kind of like these cool flames right over here. But I have a problem. I want to take this actor and put him in the foreground of this slide. So he's actually talking in front of those flames in the background. But the problem is, is that I don't really have a good way to do it. If I leave this as is, the majority of this video takes up the real estate on my slide so you can't really see those flames too good. What I'd like to be able to do is to remove this background so I just have this actor, almost like he's a news anchor, I guess. So you can do that in Canva. I'm going to select the video that I want. I'm going to go up to where it says edit video and I'm going to choose this option that says background remover. There we go, the AI in Canva was automatically able to detect the subject of our video and remove everything else in the background. So now I can kind of take our uh, actor right over here. He's almost like a news anchor, okay? He is now in the foreground. I have our background right over here. If I wanted to do something like this, like almost have a, a news broadcast with this image in the corner, I could do this. Let's see how this looks. There we go. You can see our actor is there. We have our background for some reason. It moved a little slow. There we go. So a really cool feature, what's great about this is you don't really need a green screen. You could film yourself or someone else in front of a wall, upload that to Canva, use that remove background feature, and it's almost like you have your own chroma key without actually needing the green screen. Now, it is limited to, I believe, 90 seconds. So if you have a really long video, it's not going to work. But if you have something short, and brief for a presentation or a video, you may want to check this out. Now, I do want to show you one other video. I'm going to take this uh, this woman speaking in front of the wall, like I mentioned. We can use this same feature, but you'll notice sometimes it can have it can struggle just a little bit with um, kind of not being able to isolate the subject. Instead, it either removes some of the color or it takes some away, especially when you have a subject like this who is moving her arms quite a bit, turning her head, that sort of thing. So it's not 100% perfect. I can show you this person dancing as well. Let me try that again. It's not perfect, but you know, pretty good. If you had a background, you may not be able to notice those spots where the reddish pinkish wall is visible. 
But again, just a, a great AI tool that I think is going to be extremely helpful for you. It's the ability to remove the background with just one click inside Canva. So the last thing that I want to share with you is the ability to create video avatars inside Canva. So this is necessarily a feature of Canva. It's not a Canva product. It's actually a third party product, but this is something that's possible to do inside of Canva. So here's my presentation again, my future of technology presentation. I'd like to come up with a really interesting way to start this presentation. So what I'm going to be able to do is to add a video avatar. So to do that, if you go over to apps and you search for the app D-ID, there it is, D-ID AI presenters. Let me go ahead and select that. Uh, that app and this is where you can add your own AI presenter now if you look at the bottom you do have to sign in so I'm just going to select sign in okay so I should be good so my first step is to choose the presenter that I want if I select this button you can see we have a lot of different presenters let me take uh, this gentleman here what should they say how about this Next, I can choose my language, and now I'll have to choose a voice. Okay, I've got a number of different choices. I'll just pick Davis, and the style, I will just say friendly. And let me go ahead and preview how this will sound. Welcome to the future of AI. In this presentation, be prepared to be amazed. Okay, let me pick a different one just to hear how this would sound. Welcome to the future of AI. In this presentation, be prepared to be amazed. All right, I like Davis better. Okay, I'm going to choose everything the way that it is. I'm gonna to go to friendly. Now, let me go ahead and generate my presenter. You can see that you do have to buy credits in D-ID in order for this to work. So it's not something, again, that isn't built in. It's a third party app. But if you're looking for- Welcome to the future of AI. In this presentation- I think this can be one that you might wanna utilize. Here he is. We go. Welcome to the future of AI. In this presentation, be prepared to be amazed. Okay, so kind of cool. Now, another thing I could do if I don't want that box again, you know what I could do? What we did last time, our famous background remover. Okay, now I use the background remover of this video to take out some of the white that was there. Let me go ahead and play it. Welcome to the future of AI. In this presentation, be prepared to be amazed. Okay, so a kind of cool feature that's available, you can create your own video avatars in Canva by using the D-ID app, creating an account, and then adding credits onto your D-ID account. So we've gone through several different AI apps that are available in Canva that you and your students can use to create, to make some creative designs. I hope this I hope this training has been helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below.